Now that we modeled our geometry, let's talk a bit about rendering this. And SideFX's new render engine Karma has been notorious for being in beta, being a bit unstable, and looking more like a nice tech demo than any production tool. And while SideFX still claims it's in beta as of 18.5, in my quick tests, it seems substantially more stable and substantially more capable. While still not being the fastest render engine around the block, it's starting to become an alternative for Mantra in some smaller projects. So let's have a look at lighting and rendering in Karma. I'm going to go to my Solaris desktop for that, which brings me here. So this is my scene tree, which I'm going to build using the nodes in here. Viewport and property panels are just what you're used to. So first let's import the geometry we just created using a SOP import. I'm going to drop that down and point it to the out underscore log now here which brings in this log geometry here in my viewport. Let's drag this down a bit and maybe reposition it using a transform node. Let's switch this to four views and let's move this to a point where it sits flush with the ground plane somewhat. By hitting M twice over the viewport, I can switch my axis system to be along the world axes. Maybe something like this. Let's move it up a bit. And next let's add some material to this. So let's go back to our single view in here and append a material library to this. And in here, I want to create a material. Most of the time I'm going to use the principled or classic shader. In this case, I'm going to stick with a principled shader, which implements the Disney shading model. I'm going to set my base color to white, drag this down and set my reflectivity to zero. And in my texture slot, I want to have a texture for the base color. And in here, I'm going to select my albedo file, which I color corrected. It seemed a bit too reddish in my taste. So I'm going to use this color corrected version of the albedo here. And also I want to give this some bumps. So under the bumps and normals tab, so I'll just enable this. Set a texture type to bump and then select the bump map that came with the download. Okay, back to our main stage. Let's assign this material to this geometry by setting the material VOP to the node we just created. So in the material library, let's select the principal shader here. And then let's check assign to geometry. And in the drop down here, I'll just assign this to all geometry primitives. Now I can see this texture coming through here, looking a bit plasticky in the viewport shading, but we're gonna get there. Save this and just copy this whole chain here and paste it. And instead of bringing in my log in here, I want to bring in my out underscore moss. This will just load up all these individual hairs we just created. Let's merge both of those streams together using a merge node. This goes into the first and this into the second slot. Also, I want to create a ground plane using a grid, which I'll create here, wiring in there. And that should sit flush at the center of my scene. All right, let's move this over, clean this up a bit. And after the merge, let's create a camera and maybe not at the origin. So let's delete that. And instead of manually creating this node here, let's just control click on the camera icon up here, which creates a camera at my position in the viewport here. Let's lock this camera to the viewport so I can move it around, zoom around a bit here. I don't know, something like this. And straight after that, let's attach an environment light also by control clicking on this icon here. For the environment light, I want to use an HDR. So under the base properties, I'm going to select a texture here and I'll point this to a free HDR I downloaded using this one here. So the viewport loses the shading. So I think it's now finally time to switch from Houdini GL to Karma, fingers crossed. And after a bit of compiling, we are greeted with this, a somewhat quickly converging rendering of our geometry here. So let's set up our Karma rendering engine. One way to dial in the parameters is by pressing D over the viewport for display. And in here you can dial in samples, sampling quality, sampling modes, and also individual limits. However, what I like to do is for rendering and for a more quote unquote proper workflow is use the Karma render properties node here, which has the same settings. And when flagged here, we'll set the settings for my viewport rendering as well. Another feature that I have that's new in Houdini 18 is this film roll here, which opens the snapshot strip, which allows me to take a snapshot of my current rendering and then double click on this. And it's going to be opened in mPlay with my current film strip down here. So I can switch between different versions of my rendering to compare and dial in lighting. Let's close that for now. And the first thing I want to do is increase my dome lights intensity by under the base properties tab, increasing my intensity in this case to eight. Let's have this converge a little bit. And while it's converging, let's have a look at the rendering properties here. And the first thing I want to dial in are the limits. So I want to increase the diffuse limit. So we're getting a bit more bounce here to four and also the subsurface limit to maybe two. Let's just converge this a bit more here. Take a quick snapshot of this and let's dial in our moss material a tiny bit. So moss in the material library here, this is my moss material. It does need a bump, definitely does not. But what it needs is some sort of subsurface. Plants always exhibit a surprising amount of subsurface scattering. 
So in my textures, let's drag this down here and check use texture for the subsurface color and just link up the same texture as I've used for the albedo for the diffuse. Just going to copy this texture path and pass it down here. Now let's set up the subsurface scattering itself by going to the surface tab and dragging this down here to the subsurface scattering, which I'm going to dial up to one. And immediately you can see we need to dial in those settings a bit. In my case, I want to set the subsurface mode to random walk, which is a newly implemented subsurface scattering algorithm for karma. And we definitely need to dial in the subsurface distance. So let's decrease that a bit. Looking better, decrease it further, still decrease it. And it's starting to look promising. Let's snapshot this and compare it to our previous rendering and see if that did anything. So that's our current snapshot. That was our previous rendering. And well, to be honest, apart from making the whole convergence process a good bit slower, that didn't do much. So I think in this case, we might be able to just get rid of subsurface by just dialing its amount back to zero. But Karma now has a random walk subsurface scattering mode. Another thing I'd like to show you is that the camera now under the Karma tab supports a lens shader. And a lens shader is going to be created in the material context. So it doesn't matter which of those material libraries I'm going to use. I'm just going to use the first one. And I'll just drop down this physical lens shader here that's new to Houdini 18.5, in which I can dial in a few settings for this camera. For example, under the lens distortion tab, I can, well, dial in lens distortion. Let's set this to some negative value, rather smallish. And again, let's just take a quick screenshot after this converged a bit better. And let's get to the camera here and set the use lens shader dialog to set or create. Same thing with the lens shader VOP and check use lens shader and point this lens shader VOP to the lens shader we just created. So that lives in the material library one, physical lens one. And as soon as we did that, you can already see quite a bit distortion going on there. So let's again, snapshot this and compare it to our previous rendering. So that's our current rendering. That was the previous one. So you can see this physical lens shader tries to emulate what's happening in a physical lens. Of course, the setting is a bit too much. So let's just close this, go back to our material library and dial this back to 0.01. We can add a bit of chromatic aberration, although I think it's been overdone in the past years. And also it really increased your rendering time. So yeah, you can see some hints of chromatic aberration, maybe at those edges here. Let's just snapshot this for the time being and uncheck it, dial it back to zero. And instead, let's talk about this bokeh here. So usually your lens does not have a circular aperture. So you're usually seeing a polygonal bokeh. In most case, you've got an aperture blade number between three and nine. To make it a bit more pronounced, I'm gonna set the number of aperture blades to five and rotate them a bit. However, those will only show up if we have some depth of field going on, which luckily now is also working without crashing karma. So in the camera here, under the sampling tab, let's increase the f-stop to say four. And in the karma render properties, we already have depth of field enabled. So let's just switch this back to Houdini GL briefly to dial in the focus point, setting our viewport to four split again. And then with the camera selected and the tool handle selected over the viewport, just press Z to bring up the focus handles here. So let's see where that is pointing. It seems to be good. And these handles drive where the sharp area is in my image. Let's maybe set this to an f-stop of 11. Let's go back to the single view here. And of course, that was the moment when Houdini decided crashing. So that's me boasting about how stable Karma has become, but it feels more stable than it previously has. Luckily, Houdini saves those screenshots. So even if you're crashing, they are still there. And now let's switch this back to comma. Maybe an f-stop of 11 was a bit much. So let's dial this back to eight or maybe five, even four. Am I using this at all? Yes, I am. With an f-stop of one, we are getting this nice. Okay, yeah, but that's a bit too much. All right, now finally, if we want to render this out in the comma render properties, we specified our image path here. That's good. Let's just check. We are shooting 128 samples. For now, it's okay. It's not much, but yeah. So that is looking good. Now, finally, to render this out, let's attach a comma rob, just called comma here. We just want to render the current frame. Again, we can set our picture output here and the resolution if we want to override what we have in here in our karma node. Let's set this to maybe full HD. Yes, we want to enable depth of field. Yes, we want to have 128 samples. And yes, we want to have a diffuse limit of four. We decided against subsurface, so we can leave it at that. And yeah, let's just save this and hit render to disk. And one complaint I have with Houdini is that when rendering out a single frame, 
there is no progress bar in here by default, which is different when you're rendering out an image sequence. However, for a single image, I found it most reliable to just check my task manager for the system performance. And yes, indeed, my CPU here is rendering full steam ahead. So after what amounts to a small eternity, I said Karma is more usable and more stable. I didn't say it's fast. It seems like the rendering finished. So let's check. And indeed, we've got an EXR here. So let's open that up. Yeah, there's our rendering. So those are the basics of Karma in 18.5, which has gotten a bit more usable, a bit more user-friendly. Really liking this film strip feature down here. I think the lens shader is a nice addition. And overall, lots of bugs I've complained about in my previous Karma videos have been addressed and have been fixed. So I think now Karma truly deserves being called a render engine in beta and worth checking out. If you like what we're doing and want to support us or gain access to more in-depth courses, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone supporting us already, thanks so much, guys. You are the reason why Antagma is possible in the way it is. And a very special thank you goes out to Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys.